Hey everybody, it's Josie. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. I hope you guys have had a wonderful day. And here we are on the last few days before Christmas. And uh, if you guys are like we are, we're running around here at the house trying to get all of our um, stuff taken care of to visit with our family, make sure that we've got um, their little treat baskets pardon me treat baskets made for them and so that's involving a lot of um, baking and candy making and all kinds of different things that we want to share with our family members along with the cream tiny that we made and the um, drink mixes the soup mixes and all those different things and Cheyenne has a recipe that she's going to be making for a skillet s'more that she's going to be um, putting in everybody's baskets and so we're hoping that we can get all that done and prepared to give to our families for Christmas. And I got to thinking about teachable moments, uh, opportunities that we can take to teach others. <laughs> I told Cheyenne, I said, now don't get offended tonight. This is gonna be about you. And she's sitting over there to the uh, the right of me and uh, fixing uh, her formula stuff up for the baby. So anyway, uh, if you hear him, his, daddy, his daddy's got a hold of him and they're enjoying, Blade just got home and he's enjoying being with him for a little bit. So I'm taking this opportunity to get this video out to you guys. And I wanted to discuss teachable moments for just a little while. And uh, while we're making this Christmas candy, Cheyenne is learning the family recipes and, and she's learning all of the different tricks and the things that we uh, do to make all of these recipe ter recipes turn out the right way. She's been going through my, um, my fa I have a little recipe box that's got some of my favorite recipes in it and some of the recipes that are Howie and Blade's favorite recipes and she's uh, has went through those and she got her first canning book this week and so she's excited about um, starting to can and learning how to do those things and I thought about how much fun it was going to be to be able to teach someone else and um, how all of us should take opportunity to pass on what knowledge we have to those that are coming up behind us and just like that we had people before us and I did my granny and my aunt and others uh, took opportunity to teach me things one of my earliest memories that that I have of learning a home making skill is when I was in the about the third grade and I used to say my mom tricked me because uh, she would let me pull a chair one of the dining room chairs up to the kitchen sink and help her wash the dishes and she paid me a quarter when I uh, for the whole week for for washing dishes and I thought I was just as rich as as I could be and uh, enjoyed washing the dishes until it became one of my permanent chores and then I realized that maybe it wasn't always fun to wash the dishes but she took the time and had the patience to let me stand there beside her and and learn uh, how to wash them properly and um, to make sure that they were clean and and ready for the next meal um, my granny taught me that uh, fry, uh, about frying chicken and when you got all the chicken done and you put it in a, a, a container and put the lid on it to keep it warm for supper to lay a slice of bread on the top of it and then put the lid on it and it would keep your uh, crust from getting soggy she also taught me that um, if you scorched a pot of beans don't just throw your beans out, but to peel a potato and put that potato down there in your beans and it'll soak up all the scorch taste. And as long as you don't scrape the bottom of your pan, leave that, leave those beans, uh, the scorched part in there, put your, put your potato in and that potato will absorb all of that scorch taste. You know, put it, you can put it over into a new pan and uh, the beans will taste all right with that potato. Yeah, you probably ain't going to want to eat, don't eat the potato but that absorbs all of the uh, the burn. And I'm thankful that I had opportunity to, to set at the feet, so to speak, of, of uh, wise ladies that were, uh, that were willing to teach me uh, the ways of running a household, the way of taking care of children. My um, little aunt, and I've shared with you guys before, she was the one that had the button jar that I talked about. She um, hung clothes on her clothesline the, my entire life. I never seen her use a dryer at all. She had one, but she never used it. She hung the clothes on the line, 
and you'd go out and you would help her clo uh, put the clothes on the line, but you couldn't get offended if she came behind you and redone what you hung up because she had a certain way of doing it. And she wasn't being mean. She was trying to teach us the proper way of hanging shirts and jeans and things so that they got dry the right way and they hung properly, and, uh, and I'm thankful for that. Howie was the same way when he was growing up. He ha he learned at his dad's feet, Papa Tex, and his uh, Howie's grandpa, uh, how, uh, Tex's dad. And uh, he told me lots of stories about growing up, how uh, he learned all of the things. And he learned at a very, very young age how to run farm equipment. And I'll say lots of farm kids already know how to drive by the time they're probably 10, 11 years old because they're uh, on the farm equi equipment, helping on the family farm. And um, Howie was no different. He learned that. And um, he, he used to help drive the truck when he was, I don't know, 10 or 11, drive, drive the hay truck and pull it along in the pasture while his grandpa was bucking hay and um, getting it ready to go to the barn. And that's back when they did the square bales and, and uh, Howie helped with that. And uh, then there was another time when Howie and his dad was on the porch talking and uh, the tractor went by and Howie said, Dad, who's on the tractor? And he said, well, the boys are, meaning uh, Blade and his little cousin Brendan. They were out uh, do, putting some feed out, hay or feed one or the other. And so uh, they've learned at the feet of those uh, that came before them and we've all done that and we all have opportunity to share the knowledge that we have to pass it on to those that uh, are coming up blades learned from his daddy and grandpa and I'm sure that he'll have plenty of opportunities through the years to teach little Howie uh, all of the things that he needs to know changing tires and and uh, uh, probably HVAC stuff like blade does the farming stuff, how to care for animals. And I'm sure his mama, Cheyenne, will have plenty of stuff to teach him as well. And um, I thought about uh, how we're put in charge of things and how we can be responsible for teaching the younger ones. And maybe sometimes even people that aren't necessarily younger than this, but they haven't necessarily grown up in the country or on a farm, and they don't know things that are going to help them in the future. We all know that prices are rising on uh, foods and goods, and I know right now that gas prices are, uh, at least for your vehicles, are dropping some. Uh, here in Oklahoma, we have one of the lower gas prices uh, in the country for now. I don't know. I'm not an economic expert. I kind of think that the gas prices will probably go back up. Um, I know that the grocery store, prices are going up beef and chicken and pork and uh, uh, bacon is extremely expensive beef is expensive um, that's not something that we've really had to concern ourselves with because we raise beef cattle and so we have beef um, pork is is something that we're working on um, but I really don't know how people are going to um, feed their families if they don't buckle down and really try to learn how to do some things, canning and preserving. And uh, and if they can't do that, finding food that's on sale that their family will eat and stock it up. Find people around you that are willing to teach you. Um, there, people, uh, you can go uh, to your church. There's usually uh, church elders that will teach you. Uh, they have a lot of knowledge. Um, you know, some of your neighbors, some of your family members are even willing to teach you. But also, you might be that person, I guess I qualify for this now as an elder, <laughs> to teach uh, others some of the things that I know. Like I'm teaching Cheyenne canning and, and different family recipes so that she can make blade the things that he likes from when he was growing up. That doesn't mean that she won't develop her own things, that she... Um, likes to cook for him and she's got several recipes that um, she's made here and we like those recipes and I told her earlier that she needed to go ahead and write those recipes down because uh, Blade likes them and, and baby Howie as he grows up he'll have things that he likes to 
to eat of his mama's. And when she gets to my age, if she doesn't have it written down, I assure her she will forget some of the ingredients. And you guys know that I have forgotten in times past when I've tried to bring stuff to you guys. So uh, we we that are the elders, we are the we the ones that have teachable things for others. We have a responsibility. We need to be willing to teach, not force teach people. You know, um, sometimes we get caught up in this, well, I've been there, I've done that, I know how it's done, listen to me. And you have to really make sure that they're receptive to what you're trying to teach them. And some people just simply are not. Um, you know, all along, um, our channel and other channels have tried to teach people to um, try to be as frugal as they can be. Now, that doesn't mean you have to live like a pauper, but you need to try your best to live below your means and learn new skills. There's things that I need to learn to do. I need to uh, brush up on first aid, and I need to really get in there and get more involved in herbal medicines and and um, uh, treatments and different things that if there was no opportunity that we would be able to take care of some things. Cheyenne and I, and I were just talking today that we uh, Blade is severely allergic to poison ivy. And he when he gets it, he gets it. And he uh, it's it goes from the top of his head to the tip of his toes sometimes. And so we are uh, interested in locating jewelweed because I have read that um, a salve made from jewelweed will help with uh, poison ivy. So there's things that all of us can learn and there's things that all of us can teach. You have to be teachable, but you also have to be willing to teach others. And we need to make sure that we don't get caught up in this thing of, well, they're too young to teach me anything. Or they're so old, I get so tired of hearing all their stories. And, you know, some of us that like to tell stories, I know I'm guilty of it, and some of you probably are too, that we've told our stories a few times. And um, and I'll probably keep doing it because I keep forgetting that I told you. But anyway, uh, I, I, the peanut gallery over here is nodding their heads, I think, agreeing with me. So anyway, guys, I'm going to keep it really simple and short tonight because we're we have a lot of things that we're trying to get done and i know you guys too too but i wanted to stop by and encourage you guys um to take those teachable moments either be teachable be mold moldable or be the teacher yourself this weekend all the holidays coming up is prime opportunity to put that into practice now we know that a lot of us are going to be around family members Make sure that you sit close to one of your older family members and listen to the stories that they tell you. Ask them some questions about how they how they lived and what did they do when times were rough and how they made it. Uh, you know, if you have some really older people, then they can tell you how they got through the depression and what they did when money was short and how they, uh, you know, provided for their families and how did they preserve their food. Ask questions. And also, be... Uh, one that people can approach and ask you questions if you know those things and they start asking you questions well f be free to share the knowledge that you have um, you know we can all help each other and we know that um, we're gonna keep gonna have to keep on working because times are getting rough and um, I think they're gonna continue for a while don't mean to discourage you I'm trying to encourage you to learn and to teach one another well, guys, I hope I gave you something to encourage you this week that when you gather with your family and friends, enjoy being with them and love on them, uh, enjoy the holiday with them, but also take the time to listen to what they have to say. You might just learn something, or you might be able to teach somebody uh, a skill that they didn't already have, or at least pique their interest so that they'll continue uh, to to search out and to learn how to do those things that are going to help them in the future to make their budget stretch, that they're looking well into the ways of their household, and they're learning the things uh, that are that's going to help us. All of us can do something to learn and to teach others and to encourage one another in the coming year to continue to look well to the ways of our household. Well, guys, I hope that we gave you something tonight to think about, that you enjoy your time with your family and your friends, 
gathered together celebrating the birth of Jesus, being uh, able to hug on one another's necks and really enjoy the season. But at the same time, take the opportunity to listen to one another as we're uh, uh, sharing stories. You never know what you might learn. Uh, skill sets are important. You might be able to learn something, but you might also be able to teach others that are listening to the stories that you share. Pique their interest in learning a skill. Maybe uh, they'll be coming around this next year for you to teach them how to can or um, drive a tractor or some of the things that I still have to learn. Uh, until next time, guys, this is Josie. I love y'all. I really do. We're gone.